Hey guys, I'm back here with my 2007 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is the 4.7 V8 engine. Um, what's going on today is I've got a fault code here, which I'll show you in just a second. So here, let me turn the car on. As you can see, the check engine light is on at the moment. And let me just make sure this gets synced. And we'll request the fault codes. So the one that I've got there is a powertrain a failure so far, it's still scanning. While we wait for that, look at the RPM needle here. So it's very inconsistent. There you can see it dropped. It shouldn't be this high anyways, but what happens, you'll, you'll see in just a second, it'll start sputtering and the needle is just very inconsistent. If I leave the car in idle like this, then it will um, completely stall out after just a couple of minutes. Also, if I drive it, then the ABS ESP uh, light comes on down here. And then also the skid um, or the traction control light comes on over here. So, yeah, you can see there the needle is just inconsistent. It goes up and down a lot. So let's see what this says here. So this is the one that I'm going to be fixing this P0124. Uh, pedal position sensor, also known as the throttle position sensor. Um, so I'll be swapping that out, showing you how to do that. I've made a video on this before, but with my other Jeep, I really didn't know what the issue was. This one, you can obviously see there's um, other codes here, which are being triggered because of this. So this is, um, this regulates the airflow to the engine. So it'll, it regulates the mixture of air and um, fuel. And so if the ratio is not right, then it's going to throw some other errors. So we'll try and swap out that uh, sensor first. And if that doesn't fix it, then I'll see what else I can do. So I've turned off the car here. What you're going to need to do this repair is going to be your throttle position sensor. I would suggest you use a Mopar um, part like this. I'll have a link in the description to this if you guys need it. Um, there are cheaper alternatives, but with my experience with Jeeps, just buy the Mopar parts and then you won't have to worry about it. If you buy cheap parts, then they might work, but most likely the issue will come back um, later on. So I guess if you're trying to sell your car, you can use the cheap parts, but if you're trying to keep it like I am, use the quality parts. Um, you might need a brush just to clean things up. You're going to need a screwdriver with a Torx 25 bit. You'll need a 8 millimeter socket like this, possibly an extension like this or a little one like that, a wrench, and a 10 millimeter socket. So first as always, when you're working on your car, take off the negative battery terminal so you don't uh, mess with any of the electronics. Next, you'll need to take off your air box and one of these screws. Either one is fine. I prefer to do this one here because there's a sensor back here that I don't want to get any dust on. And then just unplug this. Unplug this hose. Take this off. Set that aside. And then now is a good time to check your air filter to see if you need to either get it cleaned or get a new one. Next, you will need to take this bolt off. So there's a bolt right there. 
that should be a 10 millimeter bolt and there's one on the other side just like it so it looks like this hose is in the way so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that too set that aside and then you can get to that hole down there that bolt put that somewhere safe then take off the bolt on this side which is right there next you will need to take off this hose clamp back here so you can see there's a bolt there, you can use a flathead screwdriver or an 8mm socket. You also don't need to do these steps. The throttle position sensor is right here, so if you can get to it um, without taking off all this stuff, then you can just swap it out right here. Um, I'm just taking all this stuff off, so it's easier for me to see what I'm doing there. Once that's loose, should be able to just pull this off. Make sure you unplug um, these sensors on the side. And then just lift this and pull it out at the same time. Next, you'll need your Torx 25 bit take these two bolts on the side out. Go ahead and unplug this. And then take off these two bolts. And there we go. So there's that taken out. And there's this bar that goes across these two points here. All right, next you'll need to get your new uh, throttle position sensor. And this should come with two different seals. So this O-ring and this. Check your old one and see which type of seal it's uh, using. So this one's using the little uh, rubber O-ring. So just go ahead and get that, put that around. And then you can go ahead and get this installed. You don't need any other sealant or anything like that. Um, if yours uses this type of seal, make sure you use this type of seal. When you're installing this, that bar that's on the uh, throttle body needs to go across these two little wedges here. So there's only one way to put it in. You really can't mess this up. So go ahead and grab your new um, sensor here. Make sure that bar goes across these. Alright, so you can't really put it in this way, it's just not going to fit, but if you go this way, you will have just a tiny bit of tension on that, so it, it should turn just a tiny bit like that. Then just go ahead and get your bolts, and put those back in.
So if you want to torque these down, they should be torqued down to 60 inch pounds. I'm not really going to do that. I'll just tighten them as tight as I can get them and we'll call it good. Then just go ahead and plug things back in. And put the air box back on, put the two bolts on the side. Now before you tighten these bolts on the side all the way, make sure you get the clamp back here with the eight millimeter bolt. And then get the one on this side. Now that that's done, put this hose back on and then make sure you plug this back in. Put your air filter back in here and put your air box back in. Get this connected. Clamp this down. Plug this hose back in and then tighten this. That's it. Now we just need to go clear the code and give it a test drive. Oh yeah, don't forget to plug your battery back in or you're gonna get scared and think you broke your car. So let's see. Let's go ahead and shut this and see how it works. All right, so because we unplugged the battery, everything's gonna be reset here. Um, and the code should have been reset as well. So our check engine light should go away. And let's see if it starts behaving erratically again. So the RPMs are still a bit high. Let me see if I can cover this. There we go. So RPMs are dropping. Usually it revs up over a thousand RPMs uh, when I first start it, and then it cools down and then goes to about six to 700 RPMs on idle. It should be steady around that. It looks like it's pretty steady right now. Previously, like you guys saw, um, it was going up and down a lot. Let me try and give it some gas. Okay, previously when I would do that, um, the needle would go almost all the way to zero and then kick back up. So it seems to be pretty stable now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a test drive around the block and see how it performs and then I'll give you an update. Alright, so here we go. As you can tell there, I've driven it a few miles from where I had it before and so far it seems to be pretty steady. I didn't have any issues at any stoplights like I did before previously at stoplights it was very scary because um, the car would just stall out and then <laughs> I just had to hope that it would turn back on and I could continue driving it um, but yeah this seems to have fixed the issue so that's my tutorial on how to replace the throttle position sensor on a 2007 Jeep Grand Cherokee um, with a V8 engine if you guys found this helpful or useful Please uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment down below, let me know what you guys think, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.